Good day all. Welcome to my channel Quick Tech Master Mariner. In this video, we will learn about what is crude oil washing, the flammability diagram, precautions to be taken while carrying out cow operation, fixed and portable cow machines operation and use of inert gas. gas. The learning objectives of this section is to ensure relevant personnel acquainted with tankage to be crude oil washed, crude oil washing at sea between ports, use of inert gas, vapour emission control, Precautions against electrostatic generation. Discharge of dirty ballast. Before departure on a ballast voyage, after the complete discharge of cargo, the following tanks shall have been crude oil washed. A. All departure and arrival ballast tanks permitting compliance with trim and draft requirements and a C and D below. B. In addition, about one fourth of the remaining cargo tanks on rotational basis for sludge control. However, for sludge control, no tank needs to be crude oil washed more than once every four months. C. The moulded draft amidships, DM or draft midget, in metres, shall not be less than draft midget equals 2.0 plus 0 0.02 times the length. D. The trim by stern shall not be greater than 0 0.015 times the length, with full immersion of the propellers. Account is taken of the ship's trading pattern and the expected weather conditions so that additional ballast water is not put into tanks which have not been crude oil washed. Crude oil washing shall not be conducted between the final discharge and loading ports. That is to say, no crude oil washing shall be undertaken during the ballast voyage. Ballast water shall not be put into tanks that have not been crude oil washed. Water that is put into a tank which has been crude oil washed, but not water rinsed, shall be regarded as dirty ballast. At the end of cargo discharge, all cargo mains and stripping lines shall be drained and stripped and the drainings and strippings discharged ashore via the special small diameter. In addition, all cargo tanks are to be stripped before the ship leaves its final port of discharge. All crude oil washing must be completed before the ship leaves its final port of discharge. Where any tank is crude oil washed while the ship is at sea between multiple discharge ports, the tank should be left empty and available for inspection at the next discharge port 
before commencing the next ballast voyage. This inspection may consist of multiple sounding or dipping of the bottom of the tank when the tank is empty. Departure ballast tanks shall be ballasted prior to departure from port so that examination of the surface of the ballast water can be made. The discharge of departure ballast and any other water effluent discharged during the ballast voyage shall comply with the following requirements of Regulation 9 of Annex 1 of Marple, 73-78. The system shall be capable of delivering inert gas to the cargo tanks at a rate of at least 125% of the maximum rate of discharge capacity. No tank shall be crude oil washed unless the inert gas system is in proper operation. Before each tank is crude oil washed, the oxygen level shall be determined at a point one meter from the deck and at the middle region of the ullage space and neither of these determinations should exceed 8% by volume. The oxygen level of the inert gas being delivered during the washing process shall be continuously monitored. If during crude oil washing, a. The oxygen level of the inert gas being delivered exceeds 5% by volume, or b. The pressure of the atmosphere at the tanks is no longer positive. The washing must be stopped until satisfactory conditions are restored. To avoid excessive electrostatic generation in the washing process due to the presence of water in the crude oil washing fluid, the contents of any tank to be used as a source of crude oil washing fluid must first be discharged by at least one metre before being used. Any tank used as a slop tank on the previous ballast voyage shall be completely discharged and refilled with dry crude oil if that tank is to be used as a source of washing fluid. On ships to which these specifications apply, there shall be means to avoid vapour emission during the filling of departure ballast, wherever local conditions require it. The method of preventing the emission of hydrocarbon vapour into the atmosphere shall be a. by the use of segregated ballast tanks, wherever these are sufficient, to provide the minimum departure draught, or b. by containment of vapour in empty cargo tanks by simultaneous ballasting and cargo discharge. Alternative methods that are satisfactory to administration may be accepted provided an equivalent degree of environmental protection is provided.